with international connections. We take you from where you are to where you want to go. For more information, contact MCC at 440- T.A. Marisha Community College, your only indigenous college. We provide quality education and training opportunities at affordable prices. Our TMCC alumni occupy 75% of the Grenadian workforce with international connections. We take you from where you are to where you want to go. For more information, contact MCC at 440-1389 or visit our website at www.tamcc.edu.gd. TAMCC, unlock your potential. TAMCC Maribo Campus. Do you have an interest in agriculture or sustainable food security? We are the best for your agricultural needs. Earn an associate degree in general agriculture and learn new techniques and skills in both land and animal production. At the campus, you can also purchase organic agricultural produce, eggs, whole chickens, bottled honey, and much more. A pleasant day to all viewers. It is my pleasure to bring you to TAMCC live press conference from GIS Studio. Thank you, GIS, for your continued support. I am your moderator, Christina Swan Awaga. I am the Corporate Communications Officer of TAMCC. And with me is our IT Director, Mr. Nuss, who will help with today's proceedings. We have four panelists today. And our four panelists will indicate, by the show of hands, Mrs. Marva Boeing Neptune, Registrar, Mrs. Melissa John Dean, of SAT, Mrs. Lauren Alexander, Dean of SC, Mr. David Ambrose, Chair of the SASPS. This press conference will follow a presentation format. All presentations will be done first, and then we will follow with the media through a Zoom platform. To ensure that we do not run out of time, we will allow all presenters to share their information and then we will ask the media to note their questions and you will ask your questions during the question and answer segment. You will indicate by the raise of hand. Let us begin. Our first presenter is Mrs. Marva Boy Neptune, Registrar of the T.A. Marshall Community College and to note our topic for today's press conference is registration, reopening of school, and graduation. Mrs. Neptune. Good morning to everyone. I want to thank GIS for facilitating this press conference for TAMCC. Here we are here at the Ministry of Works conference room as well, and we want to thank them for facilitating that um, press conference for us. This morning, we're here um, to speak to the public about some of the activities that is going on at the college or will happen at the college within the coming months. Um, it's a long time coming for us. We were planning and we were revisiting all the different activities that would normally happen in a college without any um, long planning. But this time we had to revisit the books and, and, and turn things over again and again to make sure that we get it right. We know that the public, and we thank them for their patience, they were waiting to hear from us for a long, long time, and we, um, we are sort of uh, apologizing for not speaking to them before, but it didn't make sense speaking to the public when we didn't have everything together. I think we are now better ready and prepared to give some information to the public. We thank the media for being here with us so that they can um, continue to share the information that we have. And um, one of the first things that I want to talk about is the um, year two students. And these students, uh, they were recently year one. They are now moving to year two. We want to um, inform them that on September 15th will be the first day of classes for them.
Now, the protocol for um, attending classes, that would be shared with, with you by our deans who are here this morning with me. But um, just keep a note of that. September 15 would be your first day of classes. Right now, what we are doing is the registration. And we are want to appeal to all the year one students who are now moving into year two and if you are continuing to make sure that you get in touch with your school that would be your dean your academic advisor to make sure that you are registered for the semester so when you come next week that you know that you would uh, collect your schedule um, and then you would proceed to your classes. That, again, would be explained to you. The format would be explained to you a little later. We um, have already reg registered most of you, and you would get your schedule when you get in. Many of you, you have been asking for your progress report. We started um, sending the reports. They would be done in batches. We started sending them out um, last week. So within the course of this week and next week, all students should have their progress report. So you would know where you are. You would know what you need to repeat. Remember, we have an add drop period. So even if you are registered and you did not um, get a, um, you have to repeat a course, you have an opportunity opportunity to add the course. So you need not be worried about that. Now, also, we have um, the students who were um, out and did not, they, well, they couldn't communicate actually because of um, Wi-Fi and COVID and devices. Um, we would make arrangements for you when you get um, to school next week and you would be told all what you need to do to uh, keep up to speed. Your ID cards, that would be given to you when you come in as well. Some of you may, if you did not register, we are appealing to you to come to the college. We are open five days a week. Um, we are there so you can get advised and you can get registered. Um, your school fees, you can also pop in and pay your school fees. It's 810 as a reminder and so we could get that going. So that's for the year one students moving to year two. Now one of the, the main areas of concern is the year one students. Well, they are not year one yet, but we, um, they've applied to TAMCC. They would be our new intake, and so they would be our year one students come this um, semester. We were not able to say anything to parents or to them they, when they applied because we were trying to get all the information together so that when we speak to them, we can speak with a measure of confidence. And so we want to say to them today that on the, we've, we've learned that on the 22nd of September, unofficially, results, um, we would have CXC results. And so... From the week of the 22nd, that would be from the 23rd, the year one students, well, not, they're not prospective students who apply to the college, they would, um, we would have them um, registered, um, pay for the, for the year. Um, the format for that, we would... Um, inform you shortly because what we cannot do it like we did it before so we would do it in a, on a phase basis so within that week you would be coming to the college to do your advising and we would let you know how we would do your registration so that we would um, we want to keep the COVID protocols we want to keep that in 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 check so we would let you know how that would come about so we're saying that once we get the results by the 22nd from the 23rd we would um, go through a process of advising and registration and payment so that we can have you come um, start class and I'm saying by the first week in October so um, I'm going to repeat again the new applicants you would be uh, advised during the week of September 22nd. That would be precisely on the 23rd because we are expecting to have the results 
on the 22nd of September. If anything changed, we would inform you, but that's what the information that we have so far. The school fee, um, that's 810. This week, we would be start, well, by tomorrow, we would start sending out your, we've uh, actually started already, sending out your advisement, um, your acknowledgement letter. So, and that would be done using your email. So you need to constantly check your email to make sure that you get that um, letter. And that would give you more information on who your your advisor would be, on what school you would be in, the cost of the T-shirt, um, that sort of thing. So make sure you check your email for that. Now, the next thing that I want to share with you is the uh, for students. So we have three groups to deal with. We have the year ones moving to year twos. Then we have the new intake that we are expecting to um, apply. Well, they have already applied to register um, in October. And then we have the year twos. They should um, leave us. They should have already left in July, but we had to defer the graduation to October. So what I want to share with the public is that our graduation would be held virtually and that graduation would be held on the 29th of October and that would be virtually. So we would have to put quite a number of things in place. Currently, we are assessing your progress report to ensure that you have met the requirements to be awarded the associate degree. We have just um, almost completed that pro process. And by next week, the preliminary graduation list would be out so that you would know um, whether you've met the requirements for graduation. Um, students, you should be applying to do receipts and makeup. We actually, if you are getting ready to graduate, we actually had uh, one. We're having an exam today. We're going to have tomorrow, and we have a special receipt that we're going to, uh, or makeup, we're going to have for students who are affected by COVID-19. We're going to have that next uh, Thursday or Friday. So students, if you did not get the opportunity this time around, we want to know that there's a last chance for you to do that. And that's students who would have missed something because of COVID, who would have probably had an uh, I or they just did not uh, get a C and they need the course for graduation. So um, your photos that would be taken, you would be given your gong, you would be doing everything, but it would just be done virtually. So we want you to apprise you of that and um, hopefully uh, if you have questions I can just provide more information as we go forward. Thank you very much, Mrs. Neptune. As was mentioned, year one, moving to year two, and a new intake and graduation. Um, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank MTV, GBN, Kalishra Fari, and Dr. Spencer Thomas, our chairman of our board at the T.A. Marisha Community College for being on Zoom um, presently as they listen to the presentation. So at this time, I would like to welcome Mrs. Melissa John, Dean of the School of Applied Arts and Technology, as she makes her presentation. Mrs. John. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And I take this opportunity to thank you. It gives me a great pleasure to share with you TAMSIS's plans for the commencement of the 2020-2021 academic year. The college intends to implement a six-point strategy, which includes streaming, hygiene, masking, physical distancing, culture, and support in an effort to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the college. The college, as Mrs. Neptune alluded to, reopens for second year and continuing students in full-time programs on Tuesday, 15 September, 2020. The college will adopt the basic protocols prepared by the Ministry of Education as sanctioned by the Ministry of Health. In addition, there will be a screening process at every campus. Temperature checks will be conducted on everyone 
at the entrance to every campus. Persons exhibiting elevated temperatures will not be allowed to enter the campus, but rather will be directed to seek medical attention. Anyone presenting flu-like or COVID symptoms prior to being in the college will remain at home. The important thing here is to communicate. There needs to be open communication to ensure that everyone remains in the information circle. If anyone, however, begins presenting the above symptoms after arriving at the Tantin campus, that person will immediately call the campus nurse and initiate a process of moving from post to a specially assigned COVID SIGBI for assessment by the nurse and to determine the next steps. On the other hand, if anyone begins presenting those symptoms after arriving at the outer campuses, and that is Karakou, St. Patrick's, or Maribo, that person will immediately call the campus director and initiate a process of moving from post to a specially assigned sick bay or the nearest medical facility for assessment and to determine the next steps. A record of all persons entering the campuses will be kept should contact tracing become necessary. As it relates to safety and hygiene, all campuses will be thoroughly cleaned and sanitized prior to the reopening of school. And as I speak, that process is happening. All rugs in offices and staff rooms will be replaced with a material that makes cleaning easy. All air conditioning units will be cleaned prior to the reopening of school. And a cleaning roster will be created for regular cleaning with strict adherence. In addition to daily cleaning of offices, classrooms, and public areas, all washrooms and frequently touched areas will be carefully cleaned every two hours during the operational day. Every two hours during the operational day. Additionally, all frequently used doors will be kept open to minimize the touching of the doorknobs. All buildings will have access to backup water storage that can last at least one day, one school day of the college. Sanitizing stations will be installed close to the entrance of every building to be used by persons entering and leaving the compound. That too is happening as I speak. Full protective gear will be procured for use by our support staff and are being retrained to the correct use of those PPEs. Signage, discouraging sharing and encouraging proper hand washing, respiratory hygiene, cough and sneeze etiquettes, etc., will be prominently displayed at appropriate locations throughout the campuses. As it relates to physical distances, distancing, everyone will adhere to the six feet or three feet physical distancing as is advised by the relevant authorities. Appropriate signage and markers will be installed in prominent locations to remind persons of the requirement for physical distancing. This includes markings indicating where to stand while waiting to enter washrooms, staff rooms, offices, administrative buildings, etc. We will adopt a culture to refrain from physical contact as much as possible. Contacts such as handshaking and hugs would be eliminated as much as possible. The observation and adherence of all safe commuting regulations will be strictly encouraged. Everyone entering the college will be required to wear face covering, whether it be a face mask or an appropriate face covering, and observe all of the physical distancing protocols. As it relates to support, through the Department of Student Affairs, there will be psychosocial support available to employees and students on an ongoing basis. Persons will be encouraged to be open about pre-existing conditions, the onset of flu-like symptoms, and other symptoms consistent with COVID-19, or exposure to a COVID-19 patient. And that should be done without feeling discriminated or embarrassed. All reports would be treated with the strictest use of AC will be limited 
as far as possible. All will be featured with prominent signage promoting COVID-19 prevention measures. All will be sanitized before the start of all class sessions and those involving new students. All of the theoretical classes have been timetabled in such a way that students will remain stationed in one room for all face-to-face -face sessions. And the lecturers will move in an effort to minimize cross-contamination. That is not possible, however, however, with our labs. So sanitization will happen between lab sessions. Classrooms, etc., will be equipped with hand sanitizers for use by students and faculty. Classrooms will not be occupied by students or anyone when classes are not in session. So the classes will be a sanitized area and no use will be allowed outside of class timetable class sessions. Tools and equipment that are shared during practical sessions will be sanitized after use by the user as far as is possible. Additionally, students will be encouraged to bring their own small basic tools and equipment. For instance, measuring cups, hammers, little tools and equipment that the students have, they will be encouraged to work with their own equipment. Classrooms have been merged to adequately provide space to maintain social distancing. When we did our due diligence, we realized that some of the classes became very small. Classes which were originally able to support 24 students now can support only 10 students. So as a result of that, we have merged classes to make face-to-face -face classes possible. Now we realize that this period mandates a cultural change. We recognize that the success of this initiative will only be achieved if everyone follows the guidelines. And this becomes the norm or the life of everyone at the college. Everyone has a collective responsibility to ensure that they play their part in ensuring adherence to the protocol. Therefore, we are encouraging strict compliance from everyone, particularly managers, supervisors, and faculty. We are encouraging them to lead the way so that the students will follow. Expectations of new protocols will be clearly communicated prior to the reopening of school and continued thereafter. Information and orientation sessions are ongoing to brief students on the new expectations and their responsibilities. Faculty members have been engaging in training related to developing and teaching online courses. Faculty have been trained, and as we speak, training continues in the use of the Moodle platform and in technologies that most appropriately use for the delivery of online classes. Opportunities will also be created to record theoretical presentations and practical demonstrations to make them available for students for later use. The Quality Assurance Office will be responsible for monitoring, reviewing the effectiveness of the measures to do ongoing risk assessment of the work environment, tasks, and potential threats, and to propose mitigation strategies as necessary. As it relates to the scheduling of classes, the scheduling of classes will take into consideration the capacity of rooms to accommodate students using the required physical distancing. Because of, the different, because of the scenarios with the different schools, different schools have unique scenarios, I will speak specifically to the scheduling of classes in the School of Applied Arts and Technology, which is affectionately referred to as SAT. And the other deans will speak specifically to their schools. SAT offers 13 programs in four departments, namely the Department of Tourism and Hospitality, Building Construction Department, Mechanical Department, and Information Technology Department. We offer 11 associate degree programs and two certificate programs. In an effort to adequately comply with the COVID-19 protocols of physical distancing and the result in reduced capacity of rooms, as far as is practical, as far as is practical, a blended approach to course delivery has been adopted. Year one students, there will be reduced class sizes for the 2020 cohort in most programs. For our year two students, however, existing large groups will be split into sections 
for face-to-face -face teaching and merged for online teaching. All practical classes will be done in a face-to-face -face modality, while theoretical components will be done online. All classes will be scheduled, whether it is face-to-face -face or online, to prevent clashes and ambiguity as to when students and faculty are expected to meet. So we do not want a situation where faculty A schedules a class at 10.30 and faculty B also schedules a class at 10.30. All classes will be scheduled. For three credit courses, one hour will be face-to-face, -face, while the other two hours will be done online. In the school, we have decided to implement a flipped classroom approach which will be used where the face-to-face -face sessions will be more of a tutorial arrangement to ensure that all students are understanding the concepts, filling in gaps which may exist in the understanding of concepts and for summative assessments, while the online sessions will be used to deliver the content. In cases where classes has to be split into sections based on physical distancing requirements, each group will have a face-to-face -face session individually, but they will be merged for the online session. Computer labs on the campuses will be opened and available for students without devices or specialized software to use in order to complete their course requirements. We are in a new dispensation. Which, mandate, which mandates lifestyle changes. And to ensure that our mere survival happens, we'll be faced with challenges, of course. However, as we commence the new academic year, like no other year, the health, safety, and well-being of our faculty, staff, and students is of paramount importance. And so we'll do whatever it takes to ensure that they are safe and remain safe and healthy. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. John. You gave us an entire um, rollout as to what is going to be happening at the School of Applied Arts and Technology. COVID-19 protocols, orientation, online learning, training for faculty, class schedules, etc. And uh, we would like to ensure that um, the persons on our Zoom platform is continuing to indicate um, that they are going to be asking questions so that we can number you accordingly based on your indication. Thank you. So our next presenter will be Mrs. Lauren Alexander, Dean of the School of Continuing Education. Mrs. Alexander. Pleasant good morning and thank you very much, Mrs. Awago. Welcome to our chairman and members of the media via Zoom. Thanks to our technical support team who are here, colleagues. Good morning. My name is Lauren Peters Alexander and I'm presenting on behalf of the School of Continuing Education. This morning I will seek to take you through the program offerings of the school and its importance to the populace of Grenada, in particular to adults who are seeking a second chance at educating themselves. At the TM Marisha Community College, the School of Continuing Education is positioned as the outreach arm. It seeks to provide a place for each and every member of our population aged 17 years and older outside of the normal education system. We are able to take education and training where it is demanded. For example, if there are 10 or more persons requesting training in the parish of St. Mark's in a particular skill set area, such as basket weaving or electrical installation, the school will identify industry experts to deliver the training and will bring the training to the students using a secondary or primary school facility in the area. The school aims to provide learners with a perfect balance of academic rigor and applied skills instruction through a unique learning experience within the higher educational setting. In fact, most of our courses 
while grounded in academic and theoretical roots, are designed to complement the knowledge one may have already acquired in the workplace or developed through previous schooling. It is the goal of the School of Continuing Education to reduce poverty in Grenada through training, to provide a high quality education and training that is accessible, equitable, and relevant to the ever-changing needs of the student, the local community, the region, and the international world. And to provide and facilitate certification to skilled workers such as barbers, masons, carpenters, electricians, just to name a few. In addition to the main Tantin campus, there is a campus in St. Patrick's, and a subdivision within the campus at Six Roads Kariku. At SC, we make it a point to recruit and to retain top tier facilitators who are accomplished and highly competent in their own speciality. Our facilitators are practitioners and professionals in their own fields. This allows SC to provide relevant, current, updated and timely information as it happens. In other words, the information and knowledge that are transferred to our students are always the latest information. Textbooks may take years to get to the shelf, but the knowledge from our facilitators is in real time as it happens. Another important feature of the School of Continuing Education is its relationship with the facilitators, the community, and the students. We welcome feedback and constructive criticism. We encourage and facilitate one-on-one -on -one feedback and group feedback. For example, before a student is accepted or enrolled in a program, we typically have an interview or discussion with a prospective student to understand why that student chose that area of study, and perhaps, based on that, offer an alternative that will be more relevant to the candidate. During that interview, we encourage our student and prospective students to tell us about his or her peculiar situation or circumstance with the aim of customizing or making changes that will ensure the success of that student. We also strongly encourage our students and facilitators to suggest changes or improvement as the classes progress. At the end of every program, the student will do an evaluation of the facilitators and the relevance of the content, all of which will allow the department to make improvements. These features allow SE to be a very dynamic and very organic school. Who can attend or register at SE? Any adult with the basic matriculation requirements. Any high school students with two or two CXCs or more. English A is not a requirement for a diploma program. Any adults who want certification in his or her specialty, examples, auto mechanics, clocks, contractors, teachers, social workers, taxi bus drivers, store guides, etc. Working adults who want to own an associate degree program. Students at university looking to earn some additional credits at a reasonable cost. At SC, we are unique within the college in that we work with more external agencies than the other two schools. SC run programs and courses that are sponsored by external agencies. In this case, the students are only required to meet the basic requirements, such as age range and or employment status. In some cases, a small stipend to cover transportation costs to and from classes is provided and given to the students. We are currently working with SIEP, Sky UK, Jeff, and FAO. What programs do we offer? We offer technical full-time diploma programs, such as general office administration, accounting clock, plumbing, computer systems and network technician, electrical installation, welding, fashion design, hospitality, motor vehicle engine systems, general construction. We also offer part-time associate degree programs. These classes run in the afternoon from 5.30 p.m. to 9.45 p.m. 
And these programs are social work, business studies, law procedures, criminal justice, office administration. For the office administration, we are asking persons who would have graduated from the School of Arts Center Professional Studies with a certificate program to come to us to complete the associate degree program. We also offer media studies. The media studies program, we have an agreement with the university in Guyana. To, so you do three years at TAMCC and you can go to that university in Guyana for an additional two years and have a full bachelor's degree at the end. We also offer short-term courses. Currently we are offering business law, real estate law and practice, introduction to industrial relations, a practical approach to collective bargaining, labor law, modern management and administration, among others. Now that you know who we are, the question is, what have, have the school done and is doing to comply with the COVID-19 situation and protocols? The School of Continued Education had continued all classes since the lockdown in March 2020 by taking these classes fully online. We had not stopped. Our part-time associate degree students, as well as our full-time diploma students, can attest to a quick response to the situation. They were taken in hand by our lecturers and was guided through the online process. Those who were unable to log in because of not having the required devices, such as laptops and tablets, have been provided with alternative means to submit projects and assessments and most are ready for a virtual October 29th graduation ceremony. Our lecturers and students have received and are receiving training in Moodle platform and other platforms such as Edmodo, Google, Class Google Classroom, and Schoology. However, we have listened to our students' concerns and have observed the area that had suffered. This is the area of technical skills training. The school had no choice but to halt all face-to-face training for fear of spreading the COVID virus. We are now ready to resume our technical programs through the use of a blended approach. Lecturers will meet with students face-to-face -face three days per week for practical sessions. Similar to what uh, Mrs. John spoke to, well, that will be happening in SAT. And two days per week using virtual mode for theoretical sessions. Lecturers have been preparing videos to facilitate the students learning online. The lecturers are currently participating in Moodle training again, and our full-time students have been trained. All our part-time associate degree classes will commence online from Monday, September 14th, and as I said, classes will run from 5.30 to 9.45 p.m. So what have the school done, and what are we doing to answer the call of the current market situation? The School of Continuing Education is working with Comtia to offer a course called Modern Home Office Technology Certificate Program. This program will prepare students with all the skills required to work from home so that persons in the office, business people, you, you should come to us and we'll talk to you about this new program that we have planned. The School of Continuing Education is the school of hope. It is the school of second chances. We are opened Monday to, Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. and is ready to serve you, the Grenadian public. Please visit us. We are ready and equipped to take you from where you are to where you want to go. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lauren Alexander, Dean of the School of Continuing Education. Um, I will, as was mentioned, um, we have year twos preparation as well as year ones. I would just like to um, zero in on some of the um, questions thus far. Um, registration for year one, as was mentioned before, will start September 23rd, 2020, with the hope of having classes starting um, first week in October. So for persons who would have missed that information, you can get that. So at this point, I would like to have Mr. David Ambrose, Chair of the School of Applied, sorry, of Arts and Science and Professional Studies, as he share with us the plans for the school. Mr. Ambrose. Thank you, Mrs. Awaga. Good morning to everyone. First, let me clarify, I am the Chair of the Department of Arts, Humanities, and General Studies. 
and I'm simply representing the deans of the School of, of uh, the SASPS, Arts, Sciences and Professional Studies, as both deans are unavoidably absent as they are participating in the Moodle training, which all the faculty of SASPS must undergo in order to be prepared for this current blended learning approach that we'll be taking from next week. Apart from my department in the SASPS, uh, there are other departments including business or business studies, social sciences, natural sciences, office administration, and uh, teacher education. The Karaku campus of TAMCC and the Maribo campus of the college also fall within the jurisdiction of the SASPS. So it is within this school that you would find the academics, the, 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 the people who would lo love to become ac academics. We offer associate's degree in several programs, programs like business studies and uh, the sciences and so on, as well as CAPE the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Exams. And in fact, we are awaiting results, skip results. So uh, as Mr. Neptune informed us, hopefully on the 22nd of September, uh, the students will get results. As I speak about the, the arrangements and so on within the SASPS, please bear in mind uh, the presentation that Mr. John shared earlier on because that covers the entire college, including our school. The SASPS uses about 26 rooms and labs to provide instructions to its students. We offer uh, daytime classes. Um, so we have to think about space and how we make adjustments because of the, the safety and distancing protocols that we have to observe uh, nationally. So uh, we have uh, reduced the class sizes in, in, in some cases and in other cases for neighboring classrooms uh, we have or uh, we will open partitions to create a bigger room and therefore create more spacing uh, in each class. So for example in the science block which is a news building on campus science, science block rooms one and two will be open, the partition between those rooms will be open so that there is one classroom space and students can sit uh, six feet apart. Similarly with Unicall, 1A and 1B, the partitions uh, are, are going to be open and so you'll have a lot of space so that about 20 something students could fit into that big hall. And there are some other rooms where we're going to adopt that arrangement as well. One of the biggest things that we're going to implement, I believe, is rotation of departments. Uh, the idea is to not have hundreds of students on campus at the same time. So uh, the, the, the school has come up with a schedule whereby departments will have face-to-face -face classes on certain days of the week. On Mondays, Natural Science Department will come in to hold face-to-face -face classes. On Tuesdays, the Arts and Humanities Department will come to campus to hold face-to-face -face classes. On Wednesdays, that's the day for business studies, excluding office administration. On Thursdays, the social science department will come in to have face-to-face -face classes. And on Friday, the natural science department will return to hold face-to-face -face classes and labs, because um, you can't do labs um, online. So I'm um, implying that we are going to follow the the blended learning approach, where one day will be done face to face, students will come to campus, and this applies to the Karaku campus as well, not just the Tantin campus. And on the other four days, the students will be instructed online. What happens to general studies students? There are students who do not fall entirely in one department. So those students, so perhaps they might have a, a major in, in the natural science department, and one major in arts and humanities. So those students must come to campus on the day that that particular, or those particular departments must come in. So a student who is a, a math major and a Spanish major will have to come to campus on Monday and Tuesday 
to meet with the with the lecturers. Um, for the electives, all the electives will be done online. And when I say electives, I speak about general education courses like your basic Spanish or your college maths or your introduction to sociology, uh, those general education courses. Because the electives meet on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10.30 and at 3.30 or at 3.30. So uh, they will meet online. Labs, how are we going to approach this business with labs? The labs will be done two per session. So whenever students come in, let's say on Mondays to do labs, they will have two labs in that one session so that they won't have to come to campus often throughout the uh, semester. Let me talk about our faculty because the, 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 the safety of our faculty is of paramount importance. Um, the general staff room in the administrative building of the SASPS is where most of the, uh, the, the, the faculty sit. So they're going to remove some of those stations and uh, the plan is to put cubicles in, in, that, in that space and put the, the, the staff that, or the faculty that have to be removed into SB6. Classroom 6 in the science block will be changed into a temporary staff room. So the overflow from the general staff room in the administrati administrative building as well as from the, the uh, modern languages staff room and the si math and science staff room will be placed in SB6. In the teacher ed department, the faculty have their own offices, so uh, there really is no issue there. I spoke, I mentioned earlier that the deans are engaged in Moodle training, uh, so all the faculty of the SASPS have been involved in Moodle training since the 1st of September in several groups. Um, I happen to do my training under the School of Continuing Education, so that's why I'm here today. The idea is for the faculty to be trained well enough so that they could deliver instructions using the Moodle platform to our students. The students will also receive training and uh, there's an option, well, they could, receive, they could do self-training on the Moodle platform itself and uh, they're going to use next week to undergo orientation with the Moodle platform and in other areas so that they are well prepared or I guess as prepared as can be <laughs> to receive instructions. The student e-learning services page on the Moodle platform I think is well structured. Um, it, it, it shows the students how to self-enroll, how to set up the profile, how to upload assignments, you know, do exams and quizzes and so on, and to open and download files. The students will also be able to access an online library through the Moodle platform. And there is naturally a study from home guide. Let me just talk a bit about the Karaku campus. The Karaku campus offers not as many programs as the Tantin campus. You know, they offer things like social sciences, business studies, environmental science, um, and a couple of teacher education courses. The safety, the safety and uh, distancing protocols also apply to the Karaku campus. So if they, have, if they have big classes, then they are going to divide the classes into two and, uh, and uh, instruct the groups of students at different times. If students do not have computers or access to computers and devices, uh, there are computer labs that are available for the students to use. Obviously, the necessary safety and distancing protocols will apply. For the Maribo campus, the agriculture program is a two-year program. But the good thing is the first year is spent on the Tantine campus and the second year is spent doing practicals in the field. So the blended learning approach will apply to the first year students 
who are part of the Maribo campus and the face-to-face -face, uh, approach will apply to the second year students as they're in the field because they have to do things like like apiculture and uh, and other practical um, courses so uh, we have a uh, we have some plans in store for the the students when they return and the new students when they arrive later on in September I want to appeal to parents to give your 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 charges the opportunity to access the online classes there may be only one computer at home you know, give them a couple of hours make a schedule so that they could access our courses on Moodle thank you thank you very much mr. Ambrose very well said um, before we wrap up the presentations we just want to give mrs. Neptune um, another opportunity to complete her presentation on graduation so, Mrs. Neptune, we're giving you the floor for five minutes to just share some information on graduation, and then we would open for questions and answers from the Zoom platform. Mrs. Neptune. Good day once again. As I said before, graduation would be held virtually on October 29th, and um, we want to mimic what was done um, last year and in previous years and so we would provide the students or graduating class with a photo op and so we would give them a schedule the graduation handbook would be given to them by uh, today um, and it would be sent in batches again we have quite a number of students to send the graduation handbook to so we're going to send that from today um, up until next week. The handbook has all the information on graduation. But I will give you some hints. Um, we would still be doing the awards for all the programs and for that we want to thank Corporate Grenada for always coming on board with us. Um, the students with the highest GPA in the program, they would normally receive the awards and um, the public likes to see that and so we would have that um, as well but we would pre-record that um, we would give you a date when to come in so that you can take your photo we would give you a date to come in so that you you would um, basically have your name called by the deans and then you would have your graduation diploma you'd be provided with that and then we can use that in our virtual graduation um, the graduation list that the first list actually would come out on the 16th that sometime next week if you don't see your name on the list do not panic we are still updating um, students are still doing some coursework um, you have students who are doing just doing exams make up exams today and reset exams that's what they missed because of covid so we cannot update you yet we have to rate, wait on the grades so we don't want you to call because we don't have anything yet we have to wait on that so if in case you did not see your name um, don't panic but you may inquire if you feel like you are, had completed everything and that you should be on the list and it happens so don't um, think that listen I'm not there I'm not graduating you can um, call your Dean or your advisor so that you can get some um, information or advising on what you need to do just in case that something was accidentally not submitted for you and so um, I'm not too sure how much more I know the grad some people ask the graduation fee we have reduced the graduation fee but we still have some ex expenses associated with writ graduation the graduation booklet that would be sent to you um, soft copy we want you to if you don't if you're not on our email you need to get on you need to call help desk at um, tamcc edu.gd to reset your password so that you can get all your emails put in into graduation um, 
and um, pretty much I, I don't think I have um, much more but we also going to send a reference form to you um, um, well not the reference form but w a clearance form or a, an application form for graduation so that you can put your information there for the gong because we don't want the gathering in the past you used to come and collect gongs and so on the gongs they are for you to um, do your pictures and so so you may wonder well I'm not going to the stadium why, why do I have to get a gong you get your all your regalia for graduation because we need the photo you need um, that photo up and for your own um, uh, memory and, and and use so you would get that as well we would let you know but you must fill out that um, form and we would send that to you and you turn it in and then all you need to do is to just pick up we'll package everything for you all you need to do is just pick up but once you have the handbook you'd be really informed on all those little nitty gritties that um, you may have questions um, yeah thank you Thank you very much, Mrs. Neptune. You have wrapped up the presentations from TA Marshall Community College. Um, at this time, we are now going Good afternoon to everyone. Rina Pejibian here. Um, my first question is, as it relates to the online classes, now, um, what is going to be done for students who uh, don't have any access to any tools? I know you spoke about having um, computers available for them in the school, but I'm starting to be corrected. The online classes, would it be in the school or at home? And what other alternative is made for those who don't have any um, access to these devices. Also, how is SAMCC going to be working with students who are sponsored by nonprofit organizations such as PEON and um, the government? Um, understanding that these nonprofit organizations may have a strain in finances due to COVID 19. Um, yes, um, as it relates to the students who 90% of their classes or course have practical um, sessions. How is this, this going to work? Such as, um, I think, electrical and um, plumbing. How is this going to work? Okay, Mrs. John would first answer the question. Thank you very much for your questions. As it relates to students who do not have devices, as I mentioned before, provisions have been made for those students to come to, the, to come to the campus. If students have devices and are able to connect, then they could stay at home and do the classes via the platform. However, if a student is disadvantaged and does not have that opportunity, labs would be made available for those students to come in and to do those classes. For classes that are heavily practical, the practical components would be done on a face-to-face -face basis. The theoretical aspect of those courses would be done online, but the practical classes would be done on a face-to-face -face basis. What we have done is to split the classes. So where our labs are not able to accommodate the entire class, those classes will be split. So persons would come on different days to be able to facilitate the practical classes within the spaces that are allotted for the labs. Mr. Ambrose? For the, the students who have difficulties accessing the online um, courses, um, I'll just address that a bit. We did a, a survey, that's the SASPS, during the registration of returning students in August. And we, we tried to ascertain who had devices like computers or, or laptops or tablets and so on, even electricity, and we found smartphones. And we found that, well, everybody had electricity, which is great. And most of them had smartphones, and most of them had access to the internet. A smartphone is not necessarily the best device to, to do your online course with. 
but uh, students have found creative ways to access the internet. Those who had no access at home, you know, they might jump onto a neighbor's Wi-Fi or go by somebody who had and so on. But uh, like Mr. John said, at the, at the SESPS, we, uh, we will have labs that will be open, resource labs one and two, um, the library computers, the library computers will be available and so on. And I think the plan is to keep the labs open a bit longer than they would have been over the previous semesters. So there are those options. Okay, Mrs. Neptune will close off on that question. Sorry about that, Mrs. Awago. I just want to mention, um, to respond to the question that Rina asked about the electrical and plumbing students that are more um, leaned towards practical um, training. What we're going to do in the School of Continuing Education is have smaller groups of students come in during the day, especially at the St. Patrick's campus. So usually we usually have about 20 students per group during a semester, during an academic year. So um, when we assess the labs, we realize we would be able to accommodate half. So we'll timetable them and we'll put them into groups A and B and there'll be timetable during the day who come in in the morning and which group come in in the afternoon and that's how it will be handled. Thank you. Mrs. Neptune. All right. Um, thank you for asking uh, that question. Well, I'm just going to address the one with um, the sponsoring of students. Um, presently, I'm in touch with the HEON project and they have expressed their desire to continue with the students once they maintain their GPA of, I think it's 2.7. Uh, um, the government of Grenada so far, I'm seeing that um, I'm working with the, the representative and they have been doing a tremendous job in supporting these students. Um, so quite a number of them, they have been sponsored already by government. So I don't see a challenge there. However, um, we at the college, we try to find sponsorship for the students as best we could. We have a couple of other sponsors that we normally would um, use or, or refer the students um, to, and they would get help from that. We have, um, I, some of the sponsors don't, even want to be named, but we have um, the Toronto chapter. The students can apply to that. Um, we have a fund where um, one sponsor gave for the hospitality program. Not a lot of money, but that can be used. And I just want to appeal, if you don't have the money, do not, first thing, I'm not going to college because I don't have the money. Um, reach out first and let us see what we can do. We do uh, try to put students on a plan and so that that can help them um, not having to pay a 10 in the first instance but probably just break it down as as they go along so we've been very good with that and we do have people from time to time calling us saying that they're willing to sponsor a child or a student or somebody um, who do I send the money to or where do at what school and we happily say you can give it to time CC and we do help the students lots of students we help so I, I don't see a big chat maybe there is but I don't think it's significant enough so that the student can say I'm not coming to back to school because I don't have the money reach out first let's see what we can do for them thank you very just much just a follow up question um, understanding that COVID-19 left a lot of people jobless have CAMCC seen a drop in persons coming back to school um, maybe first year going into second year especially maybe in the continued education um, side of the CAMCC thank you Rina for that question um, currently the year the year one's moving to year two, and the year two's moving to year three, the part time associate degree program. They are trickling in, they are coming in. It's not at this time of the year, it's not um, 
different than previous year before the COVID. Um, you are a student and you know that sometimes you're coming to register late or on the first day of class. So at this point, I won't say that we have seen a decrease, but they're trickling, they're coming in. And hopefully we'll have the full class sizes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Alexander. Our next question will come from Ms. Kalistra Fari. I would just like to remind our media personnel that you can either indicate by the raise of hand or you can write a comment in the comment section if you would like to ask a question. Ms. Fari, proceed. Uh, good, good afternoon and uh, thanks for having me. Um, my questions have to do with financial issues. The college is um, initiating a, a wide variety of measures and the precautions um, in order to deal with the situation. So uh, can you tell me what is the, the budget for doing this? Is there any increase in cost of the college as I suspect there would be uh, for doing this? I know the college has um, been having a lot of financial difficulties um, over, over recent years. So how much is it going to cost? What's budgeted, for instance, for the next year or the next six months to put all of these measures in place um, and who's paying for it? And secondly, will there be any shift in the fee structure, either up or down um, for students? Mrs. Neptune. All right, thank is, is government providing any additional funding for the college? All right, thank you for, thank you for that question. Um, yes, there is an increase in the budget um, for that. The last uh, we looked, it was between uh, forty and fifty thousand thereabout. Um, it could be a little higher now because as we go along, we're realizing that there are more things that we need to do. Um, the fee structure, no, we're not going to um, increase the fee. But in terms of support, we are digging deep into our results. Um, as you know, we collect. Um, uh, tuition and we collect other fees so we're using some of that we do get a, um, a subvention from government and so we're almost depleting that so if we can get some additional support I think we can even do more for the Grenadian students so it, we, we don't have a lot of money but, but we're using the little that we have to make ends meet and so if anyone out there wants to pledge something to us, and if the government wants to give us more, we would happily take it, because we need it. Thank you. Any so the, uh, just to clarify, the forty to 50000 that would be for what, what period is that budgeted to cover? That's just for COVID. That's just for to cover, um, as the dean said, we have to strip some of the, um, the classrooms. We have to install windows. We have to remove the petitions. Um, we have to buy even the, um, the um, sanitizers, and we even have to outfit our um, facilities department with, with all the gears that they need. We, um, we have to spend heavily um, in that area. Tam CC is small, but it's big, and we have different schools, and we have people coming in. We have to buy uh, things to test them, and we have to even use rooms that we, um, we never used before heavily. We have to now use it for a different purpose, and so we have to outfit that room. So all that is taken into consideration, and that money is climbing as well as we speak. As I said, we do have to um, look at it every day because every day something is something new is popping up that we need to fix or we're realizing we didn't fix and for that reason we were taking long to address the public because we just wanted to make sure that at least we have something uh, substantial to share when we do come forward and that budget was a part of of that assessing what we need how much money that we would need for that so we, we're still um, still assessing and reassessing any more questions, Ms. Fari? And um, do you, you will be taking on additional staff um, for, I know you spoke about additional people for cleaning, but you're, you're doing temperature checks at the entrances. Will that be done by the security guards who are currently engaged by the college, or do you have to bring in specialized personnel to deal with the temperature, the temperature gauging? Um, that's 
yeah, we have um, looked into um, additional staff for not just the temperature check, but for the cleaning. We don't, um, we're not sure yet that we're going to bring home how many, but we may have to bring in additional for that and for the um, for 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 the extra cleaning, as Mrs. John said that um, at. at after you use the room, you have to sanitize for the next group coming in. So we would need, but we do have a fair amount of um, um, uh, cleaners. But we, because of this situation and the need to constantly having to clean and sanitize, we would we have to consider taking on new. So we may not in like initially take them on but as we see how we go we would have to do that but the security definitely would play a role in uh, when when the students enter in to um, at least have their, their hands sanitized and things like that and we're asking the students to walk with your hand sanitizers as well so that you can you can use that um, because we won't uh, throw the day be given you um, because uh, the cost the cost is is just it's just a lot, but we would do what we can. And we, yeah. Anyone else has another question from our Zoom platform, MTV? No more questions? Okay, so we have come to the end of our Tam CC live press conference. We want our viewers who came in a little bit late to be aware that you can replay the recording and also persons who would have missed it, you can share with others so that they can also get the very important information. Any other information you are missing, you can visit our website at www.tamcc.edu.gd or you can also visit our Facebook page where we will share information from time to time. We will continue to update you as the time comes closer as to the reopening of school, registration, graduation, COVID-19 protocols, etc. So we want to thank you, uh, media, for um, your support and your continued um, progress as it relates to um, Tam CC. You helped to develop us and we thank you GIS for continuing to support us. We thank you panelists for being on the Tam CC press conference. Your information was very valuable and I'm sure that the public are now um, better aware as to what is happening with Tam CC and the upcoming um, weeks and months ahead. Thank you all and thank you, viewers. I am Christina Swanawaga, Corporate Communications Officer at the TA Marisha Community College. Website at www.tamcc.edu.jd. TAMCC, unlock your potential. TA Marisha Community College, your only indigenous college. We provide quality education and training opportunities at affordable prices. Our Tam CC alumni occupy 75% of the Grenadian workforce with international connections. We take you from where you are to where you want to go. For more information, contact Tam CC at 440-1389 or visit our website at www.tamcc.edu.gd. Tam CC, unlock your potential. Tam CC, Maribel Campus. Do you have an interest in agriculture? or sustainable food security, we are the best for your